Hello again. Well, I posted a, a quite a long video last week about forest garden books and uh, I got a question back almost immediately which was asking about um, good plants for forest gardens for warmer climates. So this person was in the middle of Portugal, so kind of mild, um, more arid and dry than where I live here in Britain. So um, I recommended a book called Permaculture Plants. Now, uh, this book is an Australian book and it looks at uh, tropical and subtropical plants. So not really for where I live in Britain, but a good recommendation really for somebody who lives in a drier, warmer climate. Um, and then I got a question back saying, so what is your favorite permaculture plant? And uh, that's an interesting question because of course, like books, uh, there cannot be one favorite plant, but there are certainly plants that are um, things that we, we very much love at particular times of year. So I'm going to talk in a moment about this particular plant, which at the moment doesn't look like very much, um, but has a wonderful secret below ground. But I'd like to return to the idea of a permaculture plant, because of course, as we've discussed before, when I talked about what is permaculture, permaculture is very much about where you are. So um, this book is called Permaculture Plants, but for me, if I tried to grow these things, most of them wouldn't really be permaculture in Britain because I'd need a lot more heat and humidity and put a lot of energy into growing them. So I would say um, plants that might fit into a permaculture system where you live. And for many of us, that probably means more perennial plants. So maybe I could talk about some of my favorite perennials. There's a robin flying around at the moment, waiting for me to do something interesting where you can come and forage. So this particular plant here, Yakon, I came across uh, a good few years ago. It was This particular one was gifted to me by uh, friends I went to teach in Germany at an eco-village called Siebenlinden. And um, they were harvesting at the time and they gave me some root to bring home and I've been growing it ever since. And uh, it's for those of us who live in kind of slightly cooler climates, this is an excellent book, um, Taste of the Unexpected. Um, very interesting, lots of interesting plants by Mark Diakono. Uh, you can't see his name very well on there. Um, and Yakon is one of the plants that is in that book. So let's have a look. Just down that way. Um, so basically it's quite a big plant. It grows to up to a couple of meters tall. We grow it in pots here. We have a small cottage garden at the moment. So we don't have a lot of space. And also, if you have any kind of underground, underground burrowing rodents that like to nibble at tubers, uh, this is a good way to protect them. We found that um, initially some of the crops were particularly those we were growing in the shared garden uh, up the lane were getting quite heavily eaten. And because they form their tubers late in the autumn, it's good to leave them in as long as possible, really, before, you know, until the top growth starts to die down like this. Uh, we haven't had a proper frost here, but uh, basically when it gets cold, Yakon being a South American plant starts going, mm. um, and it puts its energy into the tubers. Uh, and that's the magic bit that we're going to be harvesting. So the several stems here, this is um, the remains of last year's stem. So what we do in Britain, because this isn't frost hardy really, um, and in the south of England it's milder than some parts of Britain but it's also, you know, we can get pretty cold here. So uh, we bring this in every, every year, uh, so we pull them up, we take off the tubers and we store what's left of the crown. Uh, and that's the remains of last year's, <laughs> I don't need that now. Um, and so what I'm going to do is to just start to lift this. There's some perennial onions in here as well, so I shall be a bit careful as to you can see it's quite solid. Just loosen this up a bit. Probably what I need to do is give it a good shifty. It's got good roots this year. Okay. Well, <laughs> that went well. <laughs> so there's um, part of 
part of the tuber that's broken off there, I think what I'm going to need to do is to get uh, something a bit more hefty to get these out this time. Okay, so going for a different method. I've got the drug and let's see if I can just basically empty it with the drug. truly in there. Okay, let's start to open her up a bit. Let's see what we have. Okay. Well, there's one of our tubers. This uh, has gone into a fairly clay soil, but uh, very interesting, the, the Acon cleans up really beautifully uh, and looks very nice. Um, I will show you another one, but of course we've eaten the last batch. Um, let's uh, look at what else we have. So, that's another one. That's a stone. find is that it will start to see so plant what you plant in any given year will start to divide up into uh, or produce several stems which you can then um, basically take up and store so in Britain we store these over winter in a cool fairly well a dry cool place um, ideally dark I'll show you uh, in a moment what happens if they're not in a, a particularly cool place but uh, so we'll be saving that for next year these are kind of propagation roots rather than storage tubers or I for said to eat those um, they're an investment in next year rather than something to eat this year if that makes sense so still got a whole heap going on here another tuber there. There's another one there. Well, this has been a pretty good year really. Um, just start to see what we've got left. But we can start to split this down and break it up into smaller pieces um, for use next year. There's another one there, which uh, has a hitchhiker along as well. Yeah, it was a warm summer and it looks like we've had a pretty good year. I'm not quite sure that do with that is that really an entire never seen anything quite like that before but that seems to be a combination of propagation route and storage tuber that is enormous anyway we've had a good year so that's not a tuber. so um we take that and uh, we like to eat these uh, they wash up very easily and uh, see they're very smooth and clean they have um, they're a prebiotic they have uh, I think inulin in here which is indigestible sugar but it's really good for your gut bacteria um, and they're really nice we have these in salad we basically uh, wash them down just chop a little bit off um, slice it up put it into salad over the winter it's a really nice crunchy texture 
but also a kind of melt in the mouth texture. It has a flavour of kind of subtle pears, very, very nice, one of my favourites, uh, hence <laughs> doing this little video. So um, highly recommended, but uh, in our climate they do need a bit of care and attention over the winter. Let me have a look at ones that we already put into store earlier. Um, we normally would keep these in the garage. Previously we've been keeping this in the garage, but we um, don't have the garage anymore. So essentially we tried, uh, this was the first lot that we lifted, we put them indoors in the corner, um, but it's just trying to grow because it's too warm. So um, what we've done now is we've kind of double insulated bucket and we're putting it into the porch. Um, so somewhere cool but frost free essentially for the winter and it will reward you with some fantastic tasty um, tubers, unusual, very easy to grow. Um, they don't really flower, we did have a flower this year which was surprisingly small and sad looking on the Akon but the plants themselves get quite big, the top growth, they're very easy, they don't really suffer from diseases um, in Britain and uh, that's my first recommended plant, permaculture plant for uh, Britain and places where you know you can keep them nice and frost free.